Hi guys, it's Nina from VR Focus. I'm joined by Gary Yamamoto, CEO of Finch Technologies. So tell me a little bit about who you guys are and what you guys do. So Finch Technologies is a company that makes uh, controllers for both uh, virtual reality and augmented reality spaces. Uh, we focus on um, non-field of view limitation, non-base station kind of controller systems, uh, which are basically IMU based, so accelerometer, gyroscope based uh, solutions. And what are you showcasing uh, today here at CES? Yeah, so at CES what we're showcasing is a, what we call a natural full freedom of motion, six degree of freedom controller for both augmented reality and virtual reality environments. And what, what are they? How does it work? Let's talk the tech. Yeah, no problem. Great. So basically, uh, all you need on this one, as I said, no base stations or no cameras or anything external, just two hand controllers and two armbands, which sit right here. And those four devices actually are sending uh, the, the positional data, four, four positions, positional data into a bio, uh, inverse kinematic body model to really model out the actual full upper body skeletal model. Not just hand position, but actual the skeletal model. So you just need the four data points and the software running to give you the full body model. So that's the upper, upper body? Upper body. So from the waist up, it's like an upper body torsional model. Uh, later, we'll release a lower body model. But at the moment, it's just the upper body. And are these out yet? Can you get them? Yes. So they're available at the moment right now from uh, our website. You can pre-order them on our website. They are available in SDK form. And the SDK comes with, just like I said, just two hand controllers two Finch Tracker armbands, and the SDK. So from what I understand, without the armbands, they're three DOF, right? Exactly. So if you have only one hand controller or you have two hand controllers, uh, they are act independently as three DOF. The minute that you add either one armband or two armbands, the system converts to six DOF. So when you say the system, are you talking about uh, general just VR headsets? What type of VR headsets are compatible with these? Yeah, great question. So the, uh, they're compatible with all-in-one headsets, like the Vive Focus headset, uh, Pico as an example. But they're also compatible with uh, both iOS operating systems, so iPhones or uh, tablets, as well as Android-based smartphones and tablets. So anything from Samsung or any of those also will work. So you can also just use them on the tablet and it would also potentially work? Exactly. So sometimes people want to use actually just a one-arm six-off solution. So they'll maybe be holding their <laughs> tablet in one arm, doing something with a Fab Lab, and they're actually using just six-off with one arm. So you can use it, uh, like I said, with one arm, or you can have two, two arms six-off. It just depends what you're looking for. Which areas um, or which, I, I guess, businesses are looking for these types of controllers? Yeah, so what we found is that on the enterprise side, uh, there's a really huge interest in, for instance, medical VR, because what they like about it is that oftentimes patients are unable to hold their hands up in front of their face. So what they like is the fact that these controllers are really able to monitor position, rotation of joints and speed of motion and capture it and record it so that later you can do actually diagnostics. So what we find in the enterprise space is any, any group which requires, like I said, position, rotation, so either whether it's medical, it could be industrial training, it could be firefighting, it could be maintenance, all those kind of uh, industries and trainings which require positional data is really where we see the greatest interest today. And consumers, gamers, are they interested as well? Yeah, we see that the gamers like it. Uh, we, we think probably the biggest thing about the gamers is they like the mobility. It's very light, it's very compact. You can just throw it in your backpack and go off to university or go to the office with it. And we, they find, we find that they really like the mobility of it and the ease of use. Uh, you don't need any heavy systems and it's also quite affordable. So in that way, uh, we see that from the gamer community, there's a real mobile gaming community that's really starting to grow and in enjoy this type of technology. So you don't need any base stations or wires, nothing attached? No additional equipment on the headset, no additional equipment on the table, no base stations. Yeah, it's literally just two controllers, two armbands, and you're ready to go. And how much is it? So um, as far as the SDK goes, a single SDK, which includes two controllers and two armbands, and the software development kit uh, goes for 249 US dollars. But as soon as you order a few in volume, it drops into the $100 range. And what are we talking about when it comes to battery life? Battery life, so the controllers use just standard AAA batteries. So it could be Duracell, Energizer, any standard AAA battery. And you can get 18 hours active playing time uh, with a single set of batteries before you, you, you need to change. And looking at these controllers um, and the armband, they're, they're little lights here. What, what are they for? 
Right, so there's two levels of calibration that you can do. Initial calibration, uh, which is called the basic normal calibration, is just a single pose that positions you in the virtual reality world. When you want to do enhanced or what you call the highest level of calibration, you can do an optical calibration. So what you'll do is you'll look at the lights, it'll measure the distance between the headset, if you have a camera in your headset, uh, to the lights, you look at the armband, but the, really the lights are only for calibration phase, and the minute that you go into the actual gameplay, the lights will turn off. They're not necessary for tracking motion, they're only for optical calibration. I mean, these are, these must be really exciting. How long has it taken you to get here? Ah, uh, well, we initially started actually with uh, three, de three degree of freedom controllers, also IMU based, and this uh, particular six off that we've been working on, we've been working on for a little bit more than a year, actually. And the main emphasis was not so much only the ergonomic hardware design, which did take time, but it's really more the mathematical models that uh, drive the what we call the Finch body model. This is the thing that took actually the most time, the mathematics. And for VR, AR moving forward, how are you, how do you see yourself within that market? Yeah, so what we see is really, um, there, we see the market in kind of two spheres, right? One is going to be the B2C and B2B. And then, as you said, there's the virtual reality versus the augmented reality. We actually think that ultimately, probably the larger market is going to be enterprise augmented reality. We see, uh, as I said, there's a huge move toward positional tracking, uh, diagnostics, and analytics that go in the enterprise side. And we think that on the augmented reality side, these type of very mobile, very affordable controllers are probably what people are looking for from a use case, user interface, user experience. Can you give me an example of a case study of a company that's already using them? Yeah, so example, we work with a medical uh, app developer company called Karuna Labs out of San Francisco. And they have made a number of pain, uh, chronic pain management uh, applications. And so what they're really doing is they're taking the patient out of the hospital room by putting them into a virtual reality environment. And once they're into, say, a football field or some other, you know, at the beach, then they're having them do a series of motions where they're actually tracking the motion, they're tracking the rotation, and they're really looking at the whole, uh, the whole body uh, model to looking at where can they improve the rehabilitation, you know, change the treatment a little bit to get enhanced recovery, and where the, the patient may even themselves not know that they're having a limitation, but you can see it in the data. So a company like Karuna Labs out of San Francisco, really on the cutting edge of medical VR, but, and, and we work really closely with them to develop their apps and using our controllers. So what I'm curious about is, because this is the upper body that you're discussing, what if we were to put these on our feet, on our legs, would we be able to get a full body tracking, do our feet as well? Yeah, so what we've released at this point in time is the upper body model, but you've hit it on the head. What we plan to do is actually release a lower body model, especially, again, for medical VR, if I go back to that example with Kerner Labs, um, they're very interested in, of course, there's a lot of uh, athletes or a lot of people who have ACL injuries on their knees. They really want to do lower body exercise, ro lower body physical rehabilitation. And so using the exact same tracker, we call it a Finch tracker, you could easily put it not only on your arm, but you can put the exact same tracker, for instance, above the knee. And so when you're doing exercises, you can be tracking position and rotation and speed uh, of motion uh, using the exact same Finch tracker, just putting it on a different part of your body. I see this as like a large medical sort of application <laughs> yes. more than anything right now. Yeah, we think medical is, is a really a hot topic, but another one is just in industrial. So for instance, like with firefighting, what we find is that they really want to analyze people trying to firefight maybe two fires at the same time uh, while signaling you know, for, for help, these kind of things. They're really analyzing how is the body moving in relation to the environment, whether it's fire or whether it's you know, uh, equipment on, 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 on a well site. Uh, these kind of environments are really where, where you see a lot of activity uh, where you, again, you're looking at positional data, rotational data, and time. So this sounds a little bit ridiculous, but I just thought of it in my head, right? <laughs> okay. uh, if you've got all of this, what about like creating character models just based on that, just based on this information? Yes, uh, it, it would be possible. Yeah, I think it's not such a crazy idea, actually. You're right. Once you have this, the basic, uh, all the data associated with positional motion, and you're actually building a skeletal model, you're exactly right. <laughs> then you have really you everything. You, yeah, you yes. can just... That, you just need those data points, <laughs> That's right? all you need, and you would actually have very lifelike data points uh, in order to build the model. Finally, you mentioned that you have partners like Qualcomm that you're working together with. 
uh, to integrate what you guys are building. Yes, exactly. So one of our, our really nice uh, uh, relationships is with Qualcomm. So they have tested in integrating our controller technology, sixth off controller technology, into their Snapdragon 845 reference design. Uh, it's really nice working with Qualcomm. They're really great. Uh, we also work really closely with HTC Vive and their ecosystem. Um, as most know, HTC Vive is really trying to grow out the ecosystem with you know, more accessories, more type of controller systems, and we're happy and very proud to be part of their ecosystem as well. So we work really closely, and we work with other, uh, other big companies. Another one, big one is Bosch. Uh, Bosch, uh, we're using Bosch sensors inside of the controllers and we have a very close collaboration with them as well uh, for current technology but also future technology. One of the things that, uh, that's really important is that if you were to take an existing Google Daydream controller or an existing Oculus controller, 3 doff controller, uh, which they have, which is fine, and you were to add an armband to that system, that system then can be upgraded easily to six degrees of freedom. So you don't necessarily need to change out your existing controllers. You can actually just add an armband to your existing 3 off controllers to upgrade. And this is the kind of uh, uh, discussions that we are looking for, forward to having with a lot of the manufacturers. We don't want them necessarily to have to change their industrial design because it's very good. Uh, but we ex exactly. Yeah. But we'd like to upgrade them if they're interested into having a real full six off experience. Where do we go to find out more information about this? Okay, so you can easily go to our website, which is www.finch-vr.com, and there you'll see a lot of videos and a lot of information, technical specs on our controllers. But it's interesting. The most interesting thing is to see the videos, to see really different applications in B two C and B two B. This is the best way to look at it. Thank you so much for your time. Great. Thank you very much. Head over to VRFocus.com if you want to find out more about VR and AR, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Thank you.